We all know the problem. We composite our layers and passes, and then suddenly we spot them bright or dark outlines around our objects. Damn. Now to fix those issues, I've seen people using all kinds of tricks. You know, someone used a mech choke, choked away half of the head. Ugh. But just like the doctor says, it's better to prevent than to cure with medicine that might have side effects. To prevent this from happening, we need to understand why we get those bright outlines in the first place. And you're assuming now that I'm gonna tell you the solution. And you're right. Ugh. So it has to do with the semi-transparent pixels. What are they? Now in Fusion, a value of 1.0 gives you solid pixels, while a value of 0.0 gives you 100% transparent pixels. The pixels with a value between 1.0 and 0.0 are the semi-transparent pixels, and those are responsible for our anti-aliasing or gradation against the background. Gradation. I thought it was gradation. But how does the program actually generate those? When you do a render out of your 3D application, you always have an alpha channel. When you do a painting in Photoshop, for example, you not only paint colors, but actually you also paint an alpha map. And although it's not directly exposed, you can view it in the channel window. So in other words, whenever you have transparency, you are dealing with alpha. Now the thing is, in order to display the colors or anti-aliasing against the background correctly, the program is doing some math, which is multiplication. Now what that does, it takes all individual color values of each pixel. It multiplies it with the corresponding alpha value, which then results in a beautiful anti-aliasing or gradation against your background. But although everything seems okay, during that multiplication process, something critical is happening. The semi-transparent values get shifted away from the true color values. Now that is no problem when viewing the image, but it becomes a problem when doing color corrections in a more complex composition, because the program assumes that the pre-multiplied values are the true values. So not taking care of it will result in the bright outlines. <sighs> okay, now I understand this is very complicated stuff here, but I will show a live example later. Let's talk about the solution. Now, depending on the application you're using, it might have a different term. So in Adobe application, I believe it's referred to as unpremultiplied. In Fusion, it is called pre-divide or simply alpha divide. As you can assume, unpremultiply is the counterpart of pre-multiply. But what does it do exactly? Simply speaking, it restores the original color values before doing color adjustments. And it's done by dividing the alpha out of the RGB values. Think of it as reversing the multiply process I showed before. Hence, we take the RGB values and this time we divide them with the corresponding alpha values. By doing so, it seems our image is losing the semi-transparency, or in other words, the anti-aliasing. Now this is absolutely normal and just temporary. With the RGB values restored, we now have the so-called straight image, which we can now color correct, tweak and twerk like crazy easy without altering the values incorrectly. We then finish the color correction process by again multiplying the alpha back into the RGB values. This will also restore the anti-aliasing, but this time with the correct color alterations. Okay, you still didn't get it. <sighs> oh, don't worry, it's no problem. Seriously, I'm using this alpha divide multiply thing for more than five years now. I never understood until the recent days why actually or what actually is going on behind the surface. But I knew that I had to do it, I knew why to do it, and I knew when to do it, okay? I just didn't understand the math behind it and what was the actual cause of the problem. So if you still have a hard time understanding this, seriously, don't worry. Just, just know that if you do like co more complex compositing with multiple layers or passes, use the alpha divide before doing the color correction. So, but let me give you a live example here. I have a background tool here. I made the resolution very small so that we can see the pixels, 32 by 32. And I've also activated the pixel grid so that we can see the pixels. As a color, I chose this blue here and I've created my ellipse mask already, which I hook in now and bang, we get this circle. Now, the interesting thing I want you to think about it for a moment is that even though we have chosen this color, here we have different colors. This is the color we chose, but here we have darker pixels. We have a gradation here. That gradation is done by the software, by the program automatically in order to create the anti-aliasing against the background. And it does so, as mentioned before, by multiplying the alpha values into your color values. So that implies the very foundation of our problem here. Doesn't this imply that these colors here are actually not the true colors? The true color is this. We assign this color to our circle, yet we have those values around the borders that are darker. So again, the program did something to those pixels in order to have an anti-aliasing against our background. It altered the values for viewing purposes. When viewing this circle, it looks right. It looks correct. It is correct. 
But when you want to do color modifications, the program assumes that these are actually your true colors, which is not. The true colors are inside the circle, these bright ones here, which have exactly this color here that we've chosen. Okay, those are the true colors. So we need to tell the program that these pixels here are not these, but actually this value here. And we do so by alpha dividing it. Okay. Ooh. Okay. So let me show you an example here what happens uh, actually if we don't do the alpha divide. So we have this image here. We're going to focus on this pixel here, the darkest one in the anti-aliasing. Actually, here's a darker one, but I want to have one that is clearly visible. So let's take this one here. Here, I'm adding a brightness of 0.2. Now, what we do is a simple addition. So I have the color inspector activated so that we can see the color values. Uh, the color inspector you can find here. So if I hover over this pixel, you can see we have a red value of 0 0.01764. And we don't care about the green and the blue channel for this ex explanation. Okay, just the red and the alpha channel. And to this value, when we add 0 0.2, we actually get a red value of 0 0.21765. Now you can use the calculator, it's correct. So I'm gonna use a calculator for you. So <laughs> let me bring the calculator in. Red has a value of 0 0.01764 plus 0 0.2, the brightness, equals 0 0.21764, okay? And I'm gonna view this now. And you can see the red value here is 0 0.21765. Now it's four and not five, and I assume that it has to do something with rounding up the number but uh, it's it's correct. So this is the value that we get. Let's let, leave it here just to, for the comparison. Now let's take again this uh, image and this time we're gonna alpha divide it and we get a different value now for the red channel. Now we get 0 0.09991 and to that we add the, again the brightness of 0 0.2 and we get the value of 0 0.2998. But we're not done yet. We need to close this thing down using the alpha multiply. And again, like I said before, it's basically the counterpart of the alpha divide. Here, the alpha gets divided out of the RGB values, while here it gets multiplied. So the RGB values multiply alpha. What you get is the pre-multiplied image. Okay, And if I do so, and uh, we check the value now, we have 0.05292. And that is the correct value. Now compare the red value on the left side with the red value on the right side. And you will immediately see that the right pixels are much brighter. Now with this example comes another problem. For example, you can see that the pixel values here where actually everything was black also became brighter. Now simply because here we had a value of 0, 0.0 plus 0 0.2 brightness uh, results in 0 0.2. Now here it says 0 0.19995 or whatever, but it's like, I don't know. <laughs> and if we would now merge this together over a background, this is the original background. And when we merge this on top, it will actually add those color values onto the background as well, which is totally incorrect. However, if we do this with the pre-divided image, we get the correct result. Okay, folks, did you finally get it? Yay! Great! You still didn't get it, did ya? Okay, well, as I said, don't worry too much. You will eventually get it. Now, for everyone who doesn't know, this video was a part of Lebox Ring, a massive fusion tutorial or course where I show how to create a multi-pass compositing project from start to finish. It's about eight hours and it contains so much valuable information and tips and tricks and, and uh, workarounds and all kinds of stuff. And you really want to check it out. So the next episode of Lebox Ring that will be released soon contains the alpha divide step. And with this video, I just wanted to make sure that everyone gets the idea so that you can continue without confusion. Uh, well, with confusion. No, without. What are you talking about? With confusion. No, without confusion. Why did you choose such a bloody confusing name? <laughs> So if you haven't started with Lobax Ring already, you can get it by supporting me on Patreon for just 10 bucks. Now that's nothing, seriously. I, I've spent the last two years um, making that thing and I can buy myself, believe it or not, too espresso from that. But well, okay. So if you still have questions, feel free to ask me, comment, and I or people like Brian, 
who we talk about in a moment, we'll be very happy to help you out. I think I can speak on his behalf as I see that he's always kindly helping out on uh, Facebook, for example. And yeah, so finally talking about Brian Ray, let me give you a quick introduction. Brian Ray is a technical VFX artist. He works at MuseFX and uh, you can check out the website. They got some cool stuff going on there. And I also saw they got some free uh, fusion tools, in-house tools that they're giving out for free. And I want to shout out a big thank you for always helping me out with technical aspects, especially with this uh, explanation here about the alpha divide thing. It gave me really head eggs trying to explain this technical thing to non-technical people. So uh, if you want to learn fusion from the very foundation, including all the technical aspects and terms and all that fancy stuff, Brian is working on a book that contains just that and everything you need to know about compositing. Yeah, so if I got you curious, you can get a read on the pre-published chapters. The link you will find in the description. Okay, so nothing left to say, but my name is Vito. I'll see you soon. Until then, enjoy what you're doing. God bless you, man. Oh, and don't forget to click the like button. Yeah, and maybe subscribe. Yeah, I really don't like to say, but well, some people say it works.